you got to get some rocks in that bag and weigh that thing down in a hurry. Yeah, seriously. I'm frantic right now. All right, I've hung my backpack on my easel, and then also I'm gonna weigh down my pallet as well. So I've got my canvas bag here that I carry my uh, pallet in. Put some rocks in that. I'm out in Placerita Canyon in Southern California with Araya on an extremely windy day. Uh, so we are weighing down our easels with rocks and our backpacks, etc., and hoping for the best. Uh, we're gonna try to make something of the scene uh, behind me. Look at that. So we're both planning to make something out of this scene right here, obviously attracted to that light colored tree, how it stands out against the, uh, the dark background. And then also some of the nice sky reflections uh, in the water. So you're working on a 14 by 18 today? 14 by 18. And then you're gonna have your uh, canvas in the full light? I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna start putting color on and see if I can handle it. Uh, I've never done that before, so it's gonna be... Gonna be a challenge? Gonna be a challenge, yeah. I'm gonna try to keep my darks at about a mid-tone. Since my palette is mid-tone gray, I'm gonna use this to gauge my values. How's it going? Is it stable? This thing blew. My adjustable hinge actually pushed down when it was so strong. So I'm gonna have to stick near my easel. Yeah, that's about as strong of a gust as I felt. I think we're gonna be all right. Yeah, we'll be all right. All right, so sketching in Brent Sienna. I want the tree to be on the third say from the right hand side of the panel and there's one branch that kind of or one trunk that comes out reaches out like this and sort of has some nice twisting and turning branches up top and then over here there's another couple of trunks going off like this, something like that. There's a little sand bank under this tree. The main creek or river is over here, but there's a little tributary or stream coming into, uh, into the main body of water here, so I'm including that. And then this area over here, it's just a, kind of a big dark tree over here. There's a shadow cast onto the creek here. And I want to establish this shadow early in the painting process just because I'm not sure what the light's going to be doing, so I may lose it. But this, yeah, this tree is casting a shadow onto the, onto the creek or river. All right, so you decided to turn into the shade. I think I might do the same thing. It's so bright when you're looking at a white canvas, right? Yeah, it was really difficult for me to, to gauge what the colors look like in, directly in the sun. And so. it's also really hard on the eyes as well. It is. So here's your composition, kind of similar to what I'm doing. Uh, although, actually, you've got the... This is the, sort of the bank of the river, and then it's going to come right there. And okay. Here's the white tree there. What, is that, what kind of tree is that? I think it's a sycamore. Sycamore. Yeah. And then that oak right here. Yeah. Little sky. All right, I got sort of a blue greenish mixture here for the darkest darks. And I'm mixing pretty quickly here, not even worrying about accuracy necessarily. I mean, doing the best I can. But the main thing is to get some of these darks established. Using the dark shapes to uh, describe or delineate the tree. It's actually a bit of another tree right over here. I'm not sure if I'll include it because it goes off the canvas. I feel like today, if I just complete this painting, it will be an accomplishment. Just because of these conditions. But in some ways, the challenges of plein air, the, the difficulties created by weather and that sort of thing, and you know, just all of the challenges that plein air presents often makes you work uh, or rely on instinct and the results can be surprisingly good or surprisingly bad, depending on how things go. But to me, it's all part of the adventure. That's why I'm out here. Okay, there's trees in the distance and there's a bit of shoreline also visible out here 
It's kind of like a sandy bank, some rocks, that sort of thing. Kind of like that. All right, this dark oak to the left has some sky holes in it, so I'm gonna leave those while scrubbing in the darker portion of the tree. And what I'm gonna do is use this bluish mixture to establish the darks of the tree, and then I'll come on top with the lighter portions. If I cover up some of the sky holes, I can always uh, use a paper towel to kind of erase a spot for a sky hole but I do know that I wanna have a few of them. There's like one up here, and then kind of a big one right in this area right here. I'm feeling slightly out of control, which I'm okay with that. And I'm just trying to focus on shapes here, and then when the gust comes, hold on. Hold on, brother, here it comes. I actually need a third hand today. One for the camera, one for the brush, and one just to hold on to, one to hold on to my panel, actually. All right, so there's some grass or light greens in this area here at the base of the tree, but then also in the foreground, kind of like this. And there's some grass that's in the shadow over here. As I mentioned, I am focusing on shapes and looking for interesting patterns in the light and dark shapes. Araya fishing out a stray paper towel. Everything is blowing away today. It's like <laughs> victory. It's like such a challenge just managing everything. Everything has to be weighted down and held onto. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, looks like you're establishing your darks first here. Keeping the mix thin? Yeah, I'm trying to keep it thin here, so in case I need to reinforce this with a darker paint uh, after I get the lights of the trees in, I just want to make sure there's a good shadow contrast with the light-colored sycamore. All right, so I've mixed up a green here that's got quite a bit of burnt sienna in it, and this is the color of the water. Uh, there are bits of reflected sky on the surface, but I'm just squinting at the water, approximating the color. There's some rocks in the foreground. I'm gonna leave those areas unpainted. And keeping this mix thin, because I will be coming on top with thicker paint to adjust colors and values. In the distance, uh, the water that's outside of the shadow uh, is a bit bluer. I can tell already I'm gonna have to darken this cast shadow under the tree. It's too light in value. And actually the shadow of the tree comes down lower too, kind of like this. So I'm just gonna erase out some of this light portion of the stream here. All right, I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue and dioxazine purple for this cast shadow. And the edges of the shadow here are sort of irregular because, you know, the branches are creating some irregular shapes. And then there's actually some shadow along the shoreline. And there's quite a bit of variation within this cast shadow, but for now, again, focusing on creating an interesting abstract uh, shape with that shadow and the relationship between the tree and the shadow is one of the things that i'm most attracted to in this scene so i'm trying to keep that in mind and make sure that i don't lose track of that which attracted me to the scene and what's most important to me all right so i'm adding some warmer tones to the water here this is a bit greener than i want it to be but i'll, I'll add some more uh, red to the mix Figuring out the color of water can be so difficult because there's, you know, there's a lot going on. You've got, you've got the color of the water itself, but then there are the reflections on the surface of the water and it can be reflecting trees or the sky or whatever. So again, it's good to just squint and not think about the fact that you're painting water, but just think about shapes and color and values. It's really helpful to just think of it in abstract terms. All right, so I've got sort of a yellow ochre mix for the sand bank here. 
I'm actually going to use this color also for some of the rocks in the foreground just to cover the panel and the bank on this side it's a little darker in value and it has some red in the mix so I put some burnt sienna into it actually I'm going to add a few touches of that darker color over here as well just to create a little bit of variation all right within the dark portion of this oak here there's some branches and trunks One thing that's concerning me is that these trunks are very straight. I think what I might do is either have some branches coming off like this and maybe some other branches coming in from this direction from the tree that's out of the frame. I'm not sure, but I need to break up this line because it's just too, too straight. Well, I think otherwise everything is looking really good. There's so much action in your blocking. It's great. Oh, thank you. All right, so the lighter portions of the trees here are actually quite a bit darker than the initial scrub in. And I still don't have these colors where I want them, but I'm more focusing on values at this point, just trying to make sure that I've got a value pattern that I'm happy with. And the value pattern as I've mentioned before, really is the composition. So if you've got an interesting arrangement of shapes and values, uh, then the painting should work. Quite a few hikers here, so we had some nice conversations, but here is the block in. So at this point, I get back about 10 or 15 feet just to look at the big shapes. Next step is gonna be turn my panel so it's not in the direct light and then I can uh, try to adjust the colors and values, but the big shapes are in place. As usual, I do not want to overwork this painting, so I am squinting at the scene to reduce uh, the scene to simple shapes and eliminate detail. And I'm just looking for delicate shifts of value, temperature, color within the shapes that I've already established. Oh, uh, yeah, that's looking good. I like how you included a lot of sky and how you can see the distant trees out here. That's really nice. Okay. The wind is picking up. All right, describe the aftermath. <laughs> All right, it went down. Actually, not too bad, really. Um, yeah, just Oh, you just right had off. that one scrape. Yeah, I got one scrape here to fix that. Actually, it's some dirt on the corners, which I don't mind that at all. It's all part of the experience. But Jeez. that one came out of, that gust came out of nowhere. That's how you handle that, folks. <laughs> no stress. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah, keep going. And I can't believe this thing like tumbled and landed on those yeah, rocks all the way over, over there. there huh? Freaking nuts. And not too, not too bad. Not too much damage. No, like I can fix all that. A little bit of touch up here. Good as new. Might want to get that grit off of it up there. A little, <laughs> little bit of dirt, sand. a little bit of gravel. All right, so here's what I finished up with. After uh, the scrub in, I more or less built up the painting using a number four synthetic flat, looking for delicate shifts of color and value within the shapes that I had. All right, you all done? I'm or, calling it, yeah. You're calling it? Calling okay, it. cool. Wow. So juicy, all that palette knife action. It's cool, because you, you, know, you put on a lot of uh, texture but also you know some saturated colors there as well i think we both did okay considering the circumstances for the wind, sure the wind and everything was crazy oh absolutely all right so hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think in the comments if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel there's a patreon link down below uh, i'll also put a link down below to arias instagram so check it out other than that, stay creative. See you guys in the next video. I lost count, but be honest. How many times did your mineral spirits fall on the ground? Three. And I somehow still had a little bit left. Somehow I think it was more than that. <laughs> I think it was five. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs>